All right. Now you're making me have to cough. All I can think about now is yeah, as as all I, I can think as about. As, as soon as I hit boom, record, and I see the red light come on, all I can think about is quiet. Yeah. Don't Try cough. I was actually I was actually drumming on the side of this chair and realized, oh man, that's loud. I wonder if it's gonna come through. No, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear yeah. it. By the way, with my red sweater and white beard, I'm telling you, yeah. Chris Kringle. Yeah, I Chris, totally there yeah. Is right there. And you got some good color to your cheeks and nose. You got, yeah. you got, uh, yeah, you got the, you got the uh, Saint Nick Let's look go going on. Him. Never see me and him in the same place. I was thinking we are very corporate today because I've got my my ACL shirt on and you we you're are in the corporate. I'm actually colors, the red and black. Hold on. We look good. Which no, you can't see it, but it's there. Yeah, I don't have a lot good. of black T-shirts other than ACL shirts. So. <laughs> Welcome into Borderline with Bernie. I'm Jeff. Uh, we have so much to talk about today. Uh, you sent me a bunch of topics you want to talk about. You're going to the SEC championship game. I'm totally jealous. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. You know, I totally forgot last week that. Um, uh, any anytime anyone has any questions, by the way, for the show or for me or Bernie or just about the sport in general or your comments, whatever, um, give us a shout on social media. Um, I, honestly, I'm not the best at checking it, but uh, we did get a really good um, topic to talk about from um, wow. from a listener a couple weeks ago. Didn't get a chance to get to oh, it because yeah. it's episode 100, and then I totally forgot last week. So. I've got it written down this week. Um, we got on, off, and in. No power rankings this week. We'll wait until yeah. after the next uh, open. But yeah, a lot, a lot to talk about. Um, for, all right, first things first. Let's get the personal stuff out of the way. Um, all right, J just a little, just a little uh, hashtag old man radio. Uh huh. Uh huh. You know how when you get to a certain age, even though we are not even close to retirement, you know how you start getting the stuff from AARP when you're like in. Oh your yeah. Yeah, you know, they they start prepping you. I swear, when you're in like your 40s, right? Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, at my age, I've been yeah. getting those things for years now. Years. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, so my mailbox um, took me to a whole different level of old man radio. Um, so, so I received this in the mail. I don't know if you can see this or not. What is that? Can you see what I got? It's a it's little. A colon. It, it's a colon test. Oh man, you, dude, yeah. you gotta do like, that. I've already like done it's mine. It's a lab test at home. It's a fecal. Yeah, I've done it, and it's, it's truly a fit scary. Test. Truly um, scary what you have to do. Hey, if yeah. you want me to walk you through it, I'll walk you through it. No, 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 no. Awful no, no, experience. No, no. no walking <laughs> through. Like I've, I've had, I've had my colonoscopy. I mean, I, I, well, no, you, I am. That's a better test. for another one. Well, that's a better test. But well, Hold yeah, on. yeah. But but you know, to receive these in the mail, it's it's like, man, wow, really? Yeah, so I've I'm done that it. old. I've done I mean, it. You, you've done the, you've is, done the mail in one. Well, I've done it's Colaguard, and I've done it, and it is <laughs> intrusive. <laughs> Let's just say you got to be kind of okay with yourself and everything that comes out of yourself to be okay with Colaguard. That yeah. is a that's a tough experience. <laughs> Um, yeah. Step one, <laughs> collect rough. sample. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then you have to mess with that sample. So yeah, it is, uh, yeah. Not yeah. for the faint no. of heart, Jeff. No, no. I mean, now this being said, we're joking, but, but I truly am. I mean, I, I, I am truly, uh, a huge fan of getting this done. Uh, cause unfortunately yeah. it, it does not really run in our family colon cancer. However, um, I did have a cousin who passed away at 40 years of age wow. with colon cancer. Yeah. So, hey, um, for all the people you know, that get are it, age, so get it done. I mean, I yeah. joke, I joke and I hate that I'm the age where I'm getting this in the mail, but, yeah. uh, man, I had two friends, uh, go, get, two, go get it done. Two of my best friends from college have already tested, you know, tested positive, but it was so early they were able to get it taken care of. No big deal. But you know, okay. they went and got their colonoscopy and it was, you know, both had, you know, positive polyps and that was at 50. So got to yeah, get it done, uh, folks. I'm, I've been late. I'm late on it. I'm so late on it. But I'm due for mine. I had I had one after after my cousin passed away. Everyone in the family went and got one. But that's been that's probably been four or five years. So I'm I'm due for another one. So, yeah. but man, isn't it? It's just one of those those hard reminders. Sometimes yeah, you're just going about your day. Check the mail. So old, Boom! Man. You're an old man. You are old. Well, I mean, dude. Old man. I don't know, man. You've still got a full head of normal colored hair. I mean, I know you got some gray in there, but you're. You're a long way from looking like Santa Claus, which I look like right now, especially when you look like, bang, 
Who can, can you tell the difference? Me and St. Nick right behind you? You can't tell the difference. <laughs> I love it. Very red with a white love. beard. You can't tell the difference. Look at that. His, his beard is bigger, and that's about it. His, his beard Bernie is Kringle. Really I, I'm, I'm, I'm the weird cousin of Chris Kringle. You are, you are. See, but you own your look. We've talked about this before. I mean, yeah, no, no hair on top. It. It's okay. Just, just not own it. Not much I can do about it. Yeah, yeah. minoxidil, all that stuff, not helping this. <laughs> not <laughs> yeah. working. Yeah. You, you got a little patch, maybe that helps. It ain't helping this. <laughs> oh, that is funny. All right, let's talk about something fun. Um, mm -hmm. So you are going to the SEC championship game. So is this going to be – so you're going with Johnsonville, so they got you some tickets. So that's awesome. Uh, I'm assuming this is going to be something cornhole. You guys going to be doing a bunch of cornhole stuff outside the game? Yeah, you know, it's one of those activations. It's at the uh, convention oh. center, which is right right across from the stadium. You know, one of those two day long. You know, it's the SEC, whatever that world is. You know, that they have inside the Congress Center there in Atlanta. You know, and we'll be right down from the SEC network, and it'll be you know taking people through and playing challenges. We got a couple pros uh, that are coming, and that'll you know kind of folks will be playing against and. You know, me running my yeah. mouth, you know, for a couple of days, and then uh, you so know, we'll do you do like some you do like some PA stuff or some play yes. by play? Like, so you just like, PA just like walking around and it's mostly PA stuff, and then you know, uh, to going through their taglines every thirty minutes, probably for each you know for each brand that's there, because yeah. Bush is just going to be there as well. Oh, as Johnsonville, uh, it's it's a big old cornhole party. Yeah, I love that. That'll be fun. I'm jealous. It got yeah. me thinking, um, speaking of SEC, not to take a quick right turn, but um, I don't think this is my on, off, and end. I don't want to I don't want to wreck it. No, this is just something I wanted to talk about uh, with the SEC. And I'm sure you've seen this before. Um, and we see it a little bit in Cornhole. But it made me think about this when I was watching the Auburn-Alabama last uh, game last weekend. Crazy. Like, like, aren't there, aren't there certain, do you ever get frustrated watching certain teams, uh, whether it's your, whether it's your team or whether it's other teams? Like, I feel like in rivalry games, there are so many times I just shake my head, like, like Auburn and Alabama, if Auburn played as hard against everyone else on their schedule as they played against Alabama, they would be, they'd be, a, they'd be a college football playoff contender. Are you talking to right? me as a North Carolina fan that plays <laughs> NC state every year? <laughs> yeah. The Super yeah. Bowl, NC State Super Bowl well, every year, I, and they I'm own us. They own us. own us. If they played like that every game with that kind of heart, that kind of determination, they'd be a really tough team to beat. But they don't. But yeah, is that a frustrating as hell? I mean, yeah. rivalry games are rivalry games, though. That's what makes them so crazy. But yes, I get what you're saying, especially when it's, you know, when you watch Georgia Tech hang with Georgia, right? Like they're there, yeah. they're doing what they can to hang with Georgia. They're yes, not that's anywhere. Another perfect example. Not anywhere near the same talent level. Right. Yeah. I mean, one one is a basically a, you know, a, a bottom end NFL team. And the other one, you know, it's a struggling division one program. But yet they were yeah. hanging. They were doing everything. They were playing as hard as they could possibly play. And so you do have to ask yourself, like, why can't you play like that all the time? I think if I were a coach, I think I would say if I was the if I was the head coach of an Auburn of a Kansas State, you know, uh, you know, who, play, who plays Kansas in basketball, Kansas State. Mm -hmm. Just, I mean, when Kansas State they never win Kansas in basketball, they never well, win. They, though. Well, they do. Yeah, they do. And they, yeah, and they well, a couple, a couple of times in the last couple of years, but really not much. Yeah, but they play hard. hard if they played sure. as hard against everyone else as they played against Kansas, we'd be talking Agreed. about Kansas State in the NCAA tournament every year. Agreed. Agreed. And it's that way at almost every rivalry game in every sport, right? Like, yeah. I'll, I'll give you one that's not even a real rivalry game that you are you have somewhat intimate knowledge with. I watched Appalachian State play North Carolina this year. A game goes to overtime. And I'm like, yeah. is that Appalachian State, State team that good? And then I watched them in another game, and they were awful. Yeah, I mean, just awful. Much lower level competition, and right. we're awful. But then they beat JMU, who's really good this year. Yeah. And so you uh, wonder. Like, that, now that's part of my on, off, and in. Uh oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think you'll like that one. But yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's frustrating. It's like it's like, you know, give I, me I that really, all the time. Yeah, give me that all the time. Why can't yes, I sure. tell you who it's frustrating for? It's got to be immensely frustrating for the coaches. Oh, that's like what I'm I, saying. If I were a coach, I think I would say if I, if I was the coach yeah. of one of those programs, I would say, "Listen, what the hell was that? Like, yeah. we need to do." And that would be my message. That's all we're asking year. for. That's yes. all we're asking for. Right? Every like, game, <laughs> I need that every game. If you want to get where we want to be, I need that yeah. every single game. It's in you. It's in you to do it. Right? Like, why why are you hiding from it? Yeah, I yeah, I can't even imagine. Like, it's so funny. I was watching a basketball game with you. I was like, you know, there's no way I could coach. 
No way. I, I would get thrown out first five minutes. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> thrown out. Either yelling at referees or players, I'd be gone. First five minutes. Couldn't handle it. Yeah. Re- now, now, yelling at the refs, I could definitely see you uh, getting on getting on the refs. But players, the way the players are just so – and look, this isn't new. I know that we, everyone likes to pile on the younger generations. This has been happening forever. There's just guys that are more nonchalant than others, right? Yeah. And, and you just wonder, like, where – like, and then all of a sudden you see a game – and they explode, right? And you're like that. That's sitting inside you all the time. What? Give it to us, right? Yeah. Uh, it would drive me insane as a coach. There's so no funny with coaches. Uh, with coaches, I, and I can't remember who told me this. There was there was a there was a coach that you would know, who once told me, um, and it was recently. I want to say it was like maybe just before COVID. Um, fair, fairly fairly big name coach that told me. He said he said, listen. I don't understand these coaches who scream on the sidelines. If you are screaming on the sidelines, that means that you didn't do enough preparation during the week. He said, my yelling and screaming and coaching comes Monday through Friday. If I'm going to coach these kids on Saturday and yell at them, I haven't done my job. And I thought that was an interesting take on that. That's an interesting take, but at the same time, that's kind of your job (laughs) because they are kids and they do need to be kicked in the tail every now and then. They just do, especially boys that are 18 to 22 need it. Yeah. And every now and then they're going to get lazy and you got to. Now, what drives me crazy is watching a coach. Like if I was a player and I knew that I, and I know that I've gotten jobbed by an official a couple of times, it happens. They're human beings. They miss calls for both mm-hmm. teams. It happens. But my coach isn't standing up for me. My coach is just kind of standing over there. Not like not getting mad at the official, not giving the official some grief. I would take that personally as a player. Like he doesn't, he's not standing up for yeah. me. He doesn't care about me. And that would drive me crazy. That's why I feel like that's different. Yelling, yelling at the refs, different. He, he wasn't talking about yelling at the refs. He was. Talking well, I know about what he's yelling. talking about, but I think every coach does that. If you're a coach that doesn't, I mean, I haven't seen many that don't. To some, be honest no, with no, you, no, no, no. Yeah, I totally agree. But some more than others. <laughs> I, I was, uh, I was scouting. I've got, I've got a game tonight, so I was scouting, uh, doing some scouting, and and uh, Coastal plays. Uh, it's just a, a, a small game. Coastal plays USC Upstate. USC Upstate is actually pretty good, but. Um, so I was doing some scouting on USC Upstate, watching their game against East Carolina. The head coach at East Carolina, I don't even know his name now, he was flipping his <laughs> lid yes. on his players. Oh, my gosh. Yes. This time and time again, running into the, into the huddle, yelling at him. And then he'd leave the huddle. He'd run back and yell at him again. It, that just kind of got me thinking about it. because yeah, Nick Saban yells at his players a lot. Like I said, a lot of coaches do. Wins a lot. I'm just saying, I, I think that kids that age need that. Now, I think you have to be constructive. Like, you can't just go in there. You can't, like, I think Bobby Knight, especially time. especially when he got older, got really a little too much. And it was just right. very, you know, he was bringing kids down too much instead of building them back up. But, yeah, I, uh, yeah. I mean, and, you know, you signed to play with a coach. You kind of have to know that's part of the gig, right? I mean, like, I know, right? You, they've watched these games. They know who that dude is on the sidelines, right? Oh, for sure. You know, but that's yeah, for sure. I don't know, man. Could you do it? Could you be quiet during a game and be like, nah. I had look, put it this way. I had some older friends that were trying to explain to me how Dean Smith didn't do this and did. I was like, are you joking? That guy was screaming at people. He just didn't cuss. Not cussing and screaming are two completely different things. He was absolutely laying the wood to people. He just wasn't dropping f bombs, right? I mean, like just not I, cussing. Just not I cussing doesn't remember mean... him on the. I, I don't oh, remember because yeah. just because I was in the Midwest. Um, oh we, yeah, we didn't we didn't get a whole lot of North Carolina basketball back. Yeah, then. you'd see him, and he would be ripping it. He just wouldn't drop an f bombs and wasn't cussing. You know, I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, you're crazy. That guy would yell. I walked by an old game at Carmichael. We'll get off this. At 14 years old, walking by the locker room, and you could hear him outside the locker room. Oh, wow. Not cussing. Yeah. <laughs> but he's, but he's, he's going at it. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember who told me that. I thought it was a good point, though. Uh, one, more, one more college football thing. Kind of funny, mm-hmm. and, then we'll, and then we'll move on. Um, somewhere, I don't know if he listens to the show. I've mentioned his name many, many times. But somewhere out there, Eric Davis has got to be laughing. Because I talk about all the time about offense versus defense, right? And mm-hmm. you got to score and all this kind of stuff. And look at my Iowa Hawkeyes all the way to the Big Ten championship game with zero offense whatsoever. And hey, and, and and I, 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 I'm not I'm not predicting an Iowa win, but 
after watching Michigan's last two or three games, I get it. Harbaugh wasn't there. Maybe that's going to be a huge difference maker. I I would much rather Iowa play Michigan than Ohio State. I feel like Agreed. Ohio State has a really dynamic offense. That, For some reason, we didn't see it last weekend. Yeah, but but if Michigan if Michigan's going to pull out this ground and pound game like they've been doing, like they did last weekend, that's only going to shorten the game. It's going to it's Iowa going to be an atrocious it? game to wouldn't watch. Look, the old, I've let you talk. I've let you talk about all this offense stuff. But the old adage is, offense sells tickets, defense wins championships. That's been the adage forever in every sport. Offense sells tickets. It does. It's shiny. It's bright. It's fun. But you got to play defense at some point to win. I mean, look at the teams that are in the final four for college right now. Probably the best four defenses, except for and, Washington. And offense. You got to have both. And that's what we talk about all the time. Well, you can't, I don't know, you can't I don't know if Michigan's easy. offense is all that special. And Florida State's isn't right now with a backup quarterback. But Oh, they were, though. Yeah. They were good. Yeah, they, and, were. And they won. Actually, they were good last week too. With, with even even without the uh, with, yeah. without what's the kid's name? Uh, By the way, did you see? I saw someone post Florida's schedule. Crit. They played two undefeated teams. They played like two or three teams with nine plus win. Like their schedule was insane. They played one team with a losing record all season. Ah, that's another one of my on-off and ends. See, now you're giving it all. Oh, ah, here we go, man. I'm calling them out early. Wow, that's crazy. Got him. Got him. Got him. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that's going to be really interesting this week, uh, just to see what happens. So, because, oh. because Eric, da Eric Davis is Iowa football, Eric Davis is <laughs> Iowa football. I don't know, man. Eric hit some of the biggest shots in the world. I was not hitting any 80 yard bombs that I've noticed. Every once in a while. Hey, every once in a while, the, 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 ki the kids. So what's the open under going to be in that Iowa Michigan game? 25. Every, every once 30? in a while, I sneak it to a tight end and that little go route right up the middle. <laughs> Every once in a while. Seriously, anyway. over under 30, 32 in that game? Uh, I didn't see what the over under was, but I did see that uh, Michigan was favored by 23, and I did take Iowa. Wow. So the over under is not going to be 32. And, and again, I'm not I'm not predicting I will win, but uh, I kind of want to look that I, up. I think it could be closer than 23. But all right. Um, you're ready for some. Before I forget again, I, I really want to get to I really want to get to this guy's this guy's comment. <laughs> I, and, and actually, I brought the, I brought this up. I brought this up a couple weeks ago. So um, uh, I'll just I'll just call him Mike. I, I, I don't know him, so I don't want to give his last name. Uh, but but it was a it was a, it was a great uh, it was a great message on Facebook. So he said and, and we're talking about cornhole now. He said, uh, listening to the latest episode about comparing cornhole to other professional sports and mental capacity. Mm -hmm. What is your take? And I'll be interested to see what your thought is on this, Bernie. What is your take on players wearing headphones and earbuds, et cetera, to block out background distractions? Love the game of cornhole, but looking at some of these pros on ESPN, uh, talking about watching some yeah. pro cornhole players on ESPN definitely takes away from the professionalism of the sport. Hmm. I never see those in the NBA, billiards, uh, golf, field goal kickers, dart players, throw pickleball in there as well, wearing anything to block out background distractions. Interesting. And he, and he wanted to know my thoughts. Um, I'd love to know. I'd love to know your thoughts on this. I thought, I thought it was a really, really kind of good point. I get, and, and, and this is, um, this is maybe going to sound like a cop out. Um, I, I, my, my initial feeling is, you know, if it's something that is distracting the viewer from taking our sport professionally, uh, I obviously am concerned about that. Right. However, however, I also want to be careful that we don't take away, um, creative freedom from our players as well, because I want them to be able to play at the highest level possible. So I feel like I'm kind of riding both sides of the fence, but I guess, I guess my gut feeling is like, I guess I kind of agree. I mean, if it's taking away from the viewer experience, I don't like that. Well, that's one viewer's experience. Now, and yeah, I understand that's, that. Yeah, that's I know. I, I get it. And um, I, I agree on some of what one, my, one of my problems is the game has grown so much and we do have TV timeouts and we have things where officials need to say something. The guys wearing headphones can't hear. So mm. basically somebody from our staff has to run out on the court during a broadcast and slow everybody down because yeah. no one can hear what anyone's saying. Right. I have a problem with that. I do understand a hundred percent where this person's coming from with, you know, you don't see anybody shooting a free throw 
with one second left to win a game with headphones in that can't yeah. hear the crap. Now, I will say as someone that's played sports, it's all white noise. You can't really – I mean, you hear it. And it's more about what you see than what you hear because it's all white noise at that point. You know what I mean? It's not – you're not hearing one – you know, it's actually worse if you were in a small gym and a small college and there was like 150 people there and you could actually hear what each individual was saying. That would actually be worse – than the white noise of just noise. Oh, yes, right? absolutely. Because what I mean, what they see is distracting. I don't know if what they hear is distracting. I don't like it because they're hiding from the other players is why I think a lot of them are wearing it. Now, a lot of them say they wear it because it gets them in the zone, blah, 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 blah. Okay, you need that to get in the zone. You need certain things to get in the zone, and that means you've got a flaw, right? If you can't just get yourself in the zone as an athlete, you've got a flaw. You know, you're not allowed to... We can go back to alcohol and certain things in other sports. You're not allowed to do mm -hmm. that. You're not allowed right. to get yourself yeah. in the zone that way. So now, granted, they do. I mean, you know, Greenies back in the day got baseball players through 162 game seasons for decades, decades, right? Oh, yeah. But uh, maybe even still yeah. on a certain level. But I, uh, I don't, baseball back in the yeah, man. Yeah. And then football players were too. God, 70s and 80s, whatever yeah. they could get their hands on. Um, I it was really interesting, though. I mean, it really. And, and, I think it's his, a great point. I think it's a great his point. comment. His comment um, was spawned by uh, the, the fact that we were talking about, you know, our sport needing to look uh, more professional, I agree. A, I agree and, and, with that 100%. and B, to look more identifiable for, and, and easier for the for the fan to watch. I think that's kind of what that. sparked this. What sparked yeah, I agree. This message I agree with what they're saying. I would need to get more than a one person sample size. On is it bothering the viewer? I would, my guess, my hunch is that the average viewer doesn't even care, probably doesn't even notice until they take them out. Mm -hmm. Right when they're talking to their, like in yeah. doubles, if they're talking to their, you know, that's probably the first time they notice. But that being said, a cornhole person watching probably notices, right? But right. that's, it's tough because I see both sides. Yeah, I, got, I mean, I would love, I would love to be able to wear headphones. Would it have been nice to wear headphones playing other sports, like playing golf? I would think yeah. if you're playing golf and you could kind of get something that you really like and get in the zone and just kind of zone out while you're on the course would be awesome. Yeah, but, see, I think I'm I think I'm somebody who I'd rather be in the moment. I think I would rather be able to take everything in. Um, but I don't know. I've never played at that level, so maybe maybe I'd be like you. Maybe maybe I'd be I'd, I'd rather be lost in my headphones somewhere. But you know who it got me thinking about is Fisher Hamilton, um, because because I love watching Fisher Fisher play. And would it, you know, I, does it does it inhibit my enjoyment of watching him play? The fact that he wears headphones, I don't think so. I mean, I would, I would, I would prefer if he didn't, because right. I'd like for him to be able to hear and react to the crowd. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't make him as good of a player, I think maybe I'd rather let him have the headphones. But I, I don't know. Yeah. I, th I thought it was a really good question. So, Mike, I think I it's a great question good. because it's such yeah. a good question. I don't think we can give a definitive answer. That's how good the question is. Yeah, you know I, 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 I could I could see, you know, I, I'd like to, I'm, I'm with you. I'd like to hear from more fans. Yeah, I would like to hear from some I, average I fans. Players, not, not I, mean, I don't players. think our players care. You know? I, I, mean, well, no, I, I disagree. Know. I disagree with that. I think you're hearing from a player. I think that's someone that plays on a certain level that watches, that loves the sport because he plays the sport. I would like to know from the average fan who's, flipping it through the channels. They just got done watching a basketball game or a football game and that's on and they get hooked by it. Are they even noticing? My gut says no, but I don't, but I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Yeah, maybe so. I don't know. I, th I thought it was a really good question though. It is a hundred percent. And uh, yeah, I'm with you. I, 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 when I say, I don't think our players care. I, I, I really, I really truly think that if you just kind of went, you know, walking around asking people at worlds, there are some. Somewhere in headphones. There know, are some. Some of them on. hate it. Some of them hate it. I've talked to them. They don't like it. They don't like that people, especially the ones that chirp a little bit, don't like the fact that other players can hide from their chirping. Mm, yeah. See, that's another good point. The, ga the whole gamesmanship, sportsmanship. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think about, you know, like I'm doing a college uh, basketball game tonight. I mean, they, they will all be wearing headphones and warm ups. But once yes. the game starts, Headphones you got to hear the coaches. You got to hear the players. Like you know, in a team sport, yep. especially something like basketball, where you're calling out picks. You know, there, there's so much communication going on on the court. You, there's no way you could do it. But in a sport like cornhole, 
Yeah, especially the singles. Too. They'll, they'll warm up with headsets on and take them yeah, off when they go when they go to play. That's true. That's true. I don't. And maybe they're not allowed golfers, to. Golfers will wear headsets when they're warming up on the range. Uh, you know, back yep. in the range, and then off they come when they play. There must be a rule out there somewhere, right? I, otherwise, why would they know. switch? I don't know. <laughs> it's so crazy. I love talking about this stuff. I, again, I, I, killed- I think that's what that's one of my favorite things. I have so many favorite things, but one of my favorite things about this job is just growing with this league. Right. I mean, yeah. just growing with the league and watching, um, you know, how everything evolves and how everything's figured out. This is just this is just another thing to think about. I, I don't know. That was really interesting. So, again, Mike, thank you for uh, yes. reaching out. Um, Great question. Yeah. On Facebook. And again, uh, and any of you, we appreciate all of you. I'll still never forget the day when Eddie came up to me and Grindersleep and said how he listens to us on the way to work you know because here's a guy who, who grinds it out as a cornhole player yeah. but still has to make money on the side right to support his family sure. so he's still working and every day uh you know when we put out not every day but you know each week when we put on right. a new podcast he'll listen to it going eddie gets it eddie eddie loves to hear two geniuses talk <laughs> eddie understands <laughs> Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's right? why we love Eddie. But uh, <laughs> but no, feel free if you have any questions, comments whatsoever. Um, just reach out to us on social media, and and we're happy to. Happy yep, to abs- you know what? I would love that. I would love if we had a, a a a listener viewer question as a segment. Right? If oh, we yeah, had enough, if we had enough people sending us even even if it's something hate filled, we could do like Letterman moments. Like when we read like the awful tweets, like have you seen yes. that on Letterman? Yeah, where, where, they, where they would read the awful that, tweets yeah. about themselves. Yeah, <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah. I know, I, did. I love that. That is. Funny. <laughs> um, yeah, we we used to do that when I was when I was doing sports talk radio in Kansas City. Um, that was the best. I mean, because we we literally would would read the bad, um, you know, notes to us as much as we'd read the good ones. Oh Cause yeah, because th- those were just funny, and they and they would give us something to talk about and. Yeah, I love that. It, it's always funny that anytime you get some hater on social media, uh, the, the, the best plenty. thing to do is the best thing to do is just confront them. Yeah, because then because then all of a sudden, all of a sudden it kind of lets the guard down. Like, oh, wait a second. Wow, yeah, this guy's responding. Yeah, to to talk, you know, talk to me. Let, let us know. Let, yeah. Hate us, love us, give us something to talk about. It would make the show even much more fun than it is now. Yeah, I love that. All right, so. Um, yeah, so feel free to reach out to us anytime. We'll get on there. So, Mike, thank you for your uh, message on Facebook. All right, um, you. I think you actually had a couple other things that I was, that you wanted to to bring up because we've got we've got to leave time. Jeez, this, I can't this even remember. I'd have to run off and in. Um, yeah. I, I feel like we keep like like taking ourselves to the very end, and then we don't have time to to get to it. Well, you're uh, saying oh, my you mom might... is coming. What does that mean? You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Yeah. Oh, All right. So, for, you know, I, I come on my questions. Just, this is just a few favorite sports season. Are you a good gift giver? Because it's Christmas time. And what would your favorite Christmas present be in the future? Now we should be saving this for our, for our Christmas episode. Why are we doing this now? Like, like Thanksgiving was just like a minute ago. I, I, I hear you. It's Christmas season. We should. We should. All right. Let's save a couple of those. We'll save the gift giver and the present for later. The sports season, we got time for your sports season one. Yeah. You said this is your favorite sports season, even though there's no cornhole going on. Yeah. I mean, I love cornhole and I'm in, I'm in that world, but as far as there, oh, actually there is cornhole. Apparently there's it's always going, it's always going on. I mean, it's always happening. You got open the open seasons in full swing. I would say my favorite season, and it's because it's such a long break. I love when college football starts. Yeah. You're going, you know, summer's kind of coming to an end. And growing up in the South, you know. You've, you've had months and months of just sweating, right? You're just sweating all day. That's going to start coming to an end. You can kind of see the finish line of that. Oh you can God. see you can see sweatshirts so in the true. future. You know what I mean? And then it's college football and pro football season starts. You know, what? if you were to ask me what my favorite time of year is, it's probably November because you're in the thick and meat of college football season and then college basketball starts around Thanksgiving and it's just great. It's great. I'm. I used to be an NBA fan. I did. I mean, it's just. Once again, the Charlotte Hornets are so bad. You're not giving me a product that I want to watch. So I've lost touch. I've lost Ooh, complete Charlotte's touch. Charlotte's getting killed right now with and everything. Fire I mean, hey, and yeah. I mean, you know, hey, seventh coach since 2018. Maybe the owner's the problem. Did you? There were there were some heart when he had his press when Tepper had his press conference the other day. 
uh, there were some hard questions. There was reporters who, who, said, who, who said to him, listen, since taking over this franchise, your record is like 30, 32 and 67 or something like that. Yeah. He oh. said, not only is this the worst mark ever in the history of an NFL franchise for a new owner, it is also the worst winning percentage of any new owner through the same time period in any other sport. He it's said, awful. at some point, do you need to look back and do some self? Uh, yes, a hundred percent. I mean, and if, you know, it, and, and if you're and from the Charlotte area, yeah, if you're from the Charlotte area, think about what he did in that whole Rock Hill situation where they were going to have their HQ. Like if you like that thing is a complete disaster that blew up, like all of it. He's just he's not good at this. Right. And he's going to make a profit. This is what sucks about it. He's going to make a profit on it. Oh, as yeah. bad as the Panthers are, he'll make a profit and a large profit. It's just. You're short sighting yourself. I mean, imagine if you did a good job, the profit, right? You take a three and a half billion, four billion dollar franchise or whatever it is and make it an eight billion dollar franchise. I mean, it's just he's terrible. And but you know, those kind of guys never see it's them, right? You know that, right? Like he's never gonna see it's him. You don't get to where he is, you don't make that kind of money without having a an ego, you know, bigger than the oh, room. Yeah. You know, and he's and I think he's one of the most I think he's one of the wealthiest owners out there. Could be. Um, the, I, I don't know. I think he is. Yeah, just from his from his business. But those kind of guys don't think it's ever their fault. <laughs> you know. Oh, I know. <laughs> no way they did. He, it he was he to his credit. I mean, as bad as his record has been, to his credit, he did he did answer the questions, and I thought he answered them. I'm glad the Charlotte Press finally stood serious. up and had a pair. You know, I not, know, right? Not a tough market, right? I mean, it's it's notorious for how soft a market it is when it comes to that sort of thing. So it's nice they actually stood up a little bit. Should we have press conferences for Cornhole? I I think we should. I don't know how many people would watch. And that's not a knock on our sport. I mean, where do we have them? And like, they put I, them on the website? Like post game? Like when Jamie Graham won the world championship? I, I'd like to hear from that. I'd watch. I'd watch. Yeah, 100%. I'd watch. I, I would like to be the one asking the questions, to be honest. Um yeah, I mean, we'd have to have yeah. There, there, we, we. I think, would, people, I, I think the cornhole community. I think the cornhole, yeah, yeah. I think the cornhole community would love it, right? Cornhole community would love it. Like if there was, yeah. How many of us would be in there asking those questions? Jerry, Jerry, right here, Jerry, holding up hands. Yeah. It, yes, it would have to be you, me, Trey, Mish, Anthony, and yeah. then and then and then we'll just rotate asking questions. <laughs> But, but I, think it, I think there. it would be. Yeah. I think it'd be good to have a press conference. You know, post game press fun, conference. Man, I think it would be good for the players. To be honest, it would be amazing practice. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it would be. It'd be great practice. That you know what, Jeff? What an idea. See, just an, what uh, an I, absolutely great idea. Even if no one watches except for the hardcore cornhole heads, right? What great opportunity for those players to get some practice doing, hopefully, something that they'll have to do in the near future. Yeah, and put it on the website. I think yep. we should do more with our website anyway. I'd like to see some more yeah. video features right away on the on the on the website. I, I agree. I, most yeah, of we're, the colleges. We're, as soon as we're using so them. much of our socials for everything that we're not taking advantage of the website. And I, I agree. Yeah, but yeah. The, web, I don't, the I don't know how that works. Interactive. I don't know how that works though. I, see, maybe see all, maybe that's see the all point. The, see all the added value that we bring as a <laughs> show. No one pays attention, man. No yeah. one's listening. Fred, you're listening. Come on, man. Make it happen. Well, press that, conferences. That's, that's Make sure Trey is here listening to this section. That's what I was thinking too earlier when you're like, you know, it'd be great to have a segment, um, you know, a viewer segment where we take a question of the week. But we have to have viewers first, then we can. <laughs> then we can. <laughs> very good point. That is a very good point. <laughs> then then we can have that. But no, I do, I do, I do like press conferences. I think it's great. I think it would be great practice. We should talk to Marlon about it. You know, Marlon would love it. I mean, it'd be great practice because you are talking about certain pros. I mean, it is still the cream of the crop. I mean, not all 256 are winning big events, but I think it would be great practice. You know, even if it is just us, you know, put them up, put them on a podium, sit them up yeah. there in front of a couple of cameras, right? Afterwards and just have them talk their way through it, you know, explain it to you. Maybe we ask some pointed questions. Now, do we, does everyone, let's say, does the final four, do they get a post, -con, you know, do we, do we, because, you know, if you watch big stuff in other sports, the losers also have to attend a press oh, conference. Oh, absolutely. I mean, how much would you love to have heard from from um, uh, Mark Richards after losing that game to Jordan Power and Jay Rubin? Right, 
Right. I yeah, would love to have heard from Gavin Cano. I would love to have heard from Gavin Cano after he lost to Jamie in the semifinals because it was you could tell it was killing him. I would have liked yes. to have known what his, where his head was at right there. Another good you know, one. But, yep. Another yeah. good one. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's that norm, normally like I don't I don't like, like I think it's a good example of what you said the final four. I love it when and I'm not a huge fan of of sideline reporting. I don't. I just don't feel like I there's a whole lot of like added value. Either. I mean, yeah. it's 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 really and the whole they thing. Bring with coaches Thompson, in the middle of a game over to talk. I think that's ridiculous. The whole thing with Chris Thompson didn't surprise me at all. I mean, it's just no one no one wants to talk to the coaches. The coaches don't want to talk to them. You don't learn anything. I mean, it's just it's most of them. I would say ninety five percent of the time, it's just it's just a dud. However, I do love it, and we'll just use the Final Four as an example. I love it when when a team loses, right? Yeah. And and the reporter goes back, Tom Rinaldi, oh. or whoever goes back. Oh. Interviews the coach. It's painful, but I love that emotion. I, I love that emotion. Um, and, I like that they give them times the gracefulness that they that they handle those moments. And I just I, I do. I yeah, do like I, I think it's tough. I don't know. I can't imagine what I would be like in that situation if a reporter came over and started asking me questions about one of the most painful moments in my life. Right. But I, either I, way, I, I think it's great TV. Whether whether you flip your good lid. TV. Yeah, uh, you know, or or you're graceful in defeat. I think both is. I, I think both are equally as powerful. And I, I and agree. I like see it. I agree. I just like watching other humans cry in pain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, but I mean that's but that's what you get so often. But like you know, you do get both sides of the coin of the human experience, right? With, with press conferences like that. So I, I like that, Jeff. Way to go, man. Way to that would go. be good. I like that. Um. All right. You you want to you want to get to on off and in. We can. I'd, I'd like to. I'd like oh, to. Give so ourselves, I'd like to give ourselves plenty of time to talk about this one this week. And don't you have? Don't we have to go backwards in time and get yours from last week? Um. Yeah. One. One of mine is a holdover from last week. Um. That's my. That's my in. So we can. We can do that. All right. We ready? Yep. Are you? Are you? Are you just now doing yours? Are you like? No, 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 no. I'm adding. I'm adding something. You look like mine. you're like, oh crap! I forgot. Yeah. I'm no, 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 no. I've got. I've got it here. I was adding something to one of mine. All right. Again, no power rankings this week. We'll wait until after. Um, after the next open, and and we'll have teams play coming up as well. So, uh, all right. Ready? On, off, and in. You want me to lead, or you want to go? Yeah, I kind of like it when you go first. Okay. <laughs> On first. I wish. Yeah. I was going to get ready to tell a terrible joke there. We'll have her moving on from that. All right. <laughs> on the board. Oh, on, yeah. On the board. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm not a great friend. I'm a terrible gift giver. I'm just a terrible, terrible gift giver. And we're coming to that season. I'm great at buying cards, you know, and finding something funny. And ha, 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 look how funny I am, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but, man, I cannot for the life of me give, give a good gift. I'm just, I'm just not good at it. And I don't know where that comes from. I've never been good at it. I don't know what to get people. I don't know the pro- I mean, hey, hey, here's a gift card because I have no idea what to do, right? You no. here, I'm going to give you this so you can do it. I'm just terrible. I'm a terrible gift giver. Giving a gift is hard. It, it really, it, 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 well, it can be easy um, or it can be hard. It's, it's, I think it's easy for people who have hobbies, right? Like if you've got a dad mm. who loves to play golf, you can sure. always get them something golf ish. Sure. And, and you're going to sure. win. But right. for That's many of point. us, we have people in our family like, like Kathy, um, <laughs> who, who, you know, anytime she wants yes. something, and I'm kind of this way, I've gotten to this, be this point in my life as well. Anytime you want something, you just kind of get it, you know? Um, <laughs> You know, there's, yeah. there, there's, you know, there's, there's not a whole lot, lot of like little affordable gifts. There's a lot of big things I want, yeah. but there's not a whole lot of like little <laughs> gifts, you know, that I need right. or want. Uh, but Kathy's super hard to buy for. So, I mean, I literally. Oh, is she a good gift giver? Um, yes. Yeah, she is. She Julie is. I'm not. And I'm just, there you go. Couldn't even wrap it. I just, the tag's still on it. Yeah. There you go. Like, I'm just terrible. Terrible gift giver. I try. I that should be my in the hole. I don't know why it's my on the board, but it's uh, yeah, that's yeah. a good one. It, it's it's hard. It's it, for for certain people, it's really hard to find. Uh, my mom, my mom is so easy to buy for. She literally wants for nothing. If you get her a ten dollar gift certificate to Caribou Coffee, she will be giddy as a schoolgirl. I mean, she just she she my mom. Well, just she's just a great gift receiver. 
she, I'm not good at that she either. Is. She just likes her, she just likes to know that you're thinking about her, right? And that you sent her something. Now, God forbid you don't send her, Jeffrey. I've told this story before. <laughs> Je- Jeffrey, should I be should I, should I be expecting a card from you soon? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm terrible, man. You don't think I haven't had? I'm that terrible, card. man. I'm the worst. I am the worst. Admitted worst gift giver. It's awful. All right, that's good. That's good. I like it. All right, my on the board. Um, I really don't mean to make people upset about this. I really don't. Uh, But DPR is not (laughs) a measure of defense. Wow. Is it a good stat? Yeah, it's good. (laughs) Is it is it the end all be all of a defensive you know type of player or a dirty style player? No. Mm -hmm. It's it's different. It's point differential. That's all it is. And you know who doesn't like point differential? Who's that? The NBA. They got Mm. this whole in season playoff thing going, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden, the players are realizing, wait a second, the tiebreaker is point differential? Oh, did you see what happened the other night? Did you see what happened yeah, I mean, the other night? The players the Celtics. are chasing points now. Now it's Yeah, did you I mean, see what like the coaches? The, uh, what, God, what team was it? It was the Celtics and somebody, and the Celtics coach had to explain to Billy Donovan, look, we're not trying to embarrass your team. You the score, yeah. You know, but we have to win by 23 or more or we don't advance. Because yeah. they kept fouling the worst free throw shooter, and it was like a twenty, you know, whatever point game. And Billy Donovan's like, "What the f are you doing?" Like you right. can see him, and they were screaming. You know, they started like screaming at each other at half court, and they, yeah. you know, they calmed down and he understood it. But you could see him kind of shaking his head, like, "This isn't good. It's not good for the game to be two minutes left in the fourth quarter to yeah. your point, fouling the worst free throw shooter, trying to win." I'm with you. I'm with you on that. But DPR, DPR is not a measure of a great defense. It, can it be used in certain in sure. certain ways to make an argument? Sure, but but again, you know, just, just reading the 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 NBA's comments, it made me think of a few other things now of, mm-hmm. of more reasons against it. Um, I've talked about the opponent strength of schedule. There is no factor of opponent strength of schedule in it. Look at the Dallas Cowboys. Mm-hmm. I don't mean to cross over sports. The Cowboys beat the shit out of terrible teams. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't mean they're a great team. Yeah. You know, they just they're just they're just beating bad teams. I mean, that's or, that's, that's all. Or it's Florida. Or is Florida bad? When you look at their schedule, and you look at their schedule, yeah. ended up being they played one team with a losing record, and I think yeah. that team was five and seven, and everybody else was pretty good. So what is their I mean, point pretty, yeah, they, They're yeah. probably a pretty good team if they had everyone else's schedule. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? They, they just had just a ruthless schedule this year. It's interesting. So, That's a good so point. again, specific to our sport, it has no factor of opponent's strength of schedule in it. Here's another thing, and this, this is something that got me thinking reading some of the NBA players and coaches' comments. Um, you know, what about the player who's down early? And then all of a sudden just has to start really taking high risk shots, right? Sure. To try to try and come back. And they end up losing 21 to five. Doesn't mean that they're it doesn't it doesn't mean let's say I'm playing Mark Richards, right? And I get down early and I got I gotta I gotta take all kinds of crazy shots to come back and he beats me 21 to five. It doesn't mean right. Mark's a great defensive player. It means I had to take crappy shots to try and get back into it. I There's hear you. No factor of that. And then conversely, Bernie, um, let's say you're down early and now all of a sudden. Let, let's say I'm Chris Kingsbury, right? I'm down early, and now I'm like, well, shoot, I'm not a dirty player, but now I do need to play dirty, you know? So right. now that flips it on its head the opposite way. So now I think a player that's, who doesn't want to be, it's, it, it, it's not a factor of whether or not you're a great a great. I, I think that's player. how they use it. They, they use it more as an average over a tournament usually, but I, I get where you're coming from. I get completely where you're coming Still, from. No strength of schedule. That's my number one I, argument. I, I I'm that. with you. I'm with you. I, I agree. I think it's... I think it's a stat that is necessary. It's almost like if you went into a computer formula, right? I think you would need PPR. I think you would need DPR. I think you would need a strength of, you know, you would need all of these inside of a computer yeah. algorithm to come out with, you know, your best players yeah. ranked. But, you know, maybe, I think it's a good maybe one day we'll get there. That would I think be it's crazy. an interesting stat. It's interesting. Yes. You know, and, and, and it ends there. I, it, it, to me, it's not a definer of, of whether or not a player is a great defensive player or a great dirty player because they've got I a great EPR. I hear I, I follow you. I smell what you're stepping in, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Off the board. And, and look you're, at this. And now we have a few minutes left. Yeah, off the board. Christmas blows. That's my that's my off the board. I, I've, I've never. What? You're dressed I, like old Saint today. Look, I, I've just and never been. Gotta, gotta I've never been. been to, look, it's it's me. I, this is why it's my off the board. I know it's me. I know it's me. That's the weird one here. 
you grow up in a dysfunctional family, certain things happen, you know, Christmas kind of reminds you of all the things that went wrong sometimes. And so it's like, it's not the best. It's stressful. You got to go get presents for everybody, especially when you're someone like me that can't give a good gift if their life depended on it. It's stressful. The travel stressful. It's stressful. It's not the greatest thing in the world. Now, preface or suffix, I know it's me. I know I'm the weird one. I know it's, I know it's, I'm the guy that's off. Chris Kringle, not happy with me. Look at him right there. He's got his arms like, what? I think you do like Christmas. I think you're lying. I, I, I think don't. you're lying to yourself. I think I you're like, you're I dressed don't. like Santa Claus, and he's literally... I, it's a red guy. sweater that is clean. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, is, uh, that, is, that is about the extent of it. <laughs> you're smiling too much. You like Christmas. I like Christmas. I like when other people nice like Christmas. I like when other people like Christmas. I don't. I'm, it's my, of all the holidays, it's probably ranked. I mean, it's it's not up there for me. See, once Thanksgiving hits, we, we're all about Christmas. We have dysfunction in our family too. But you see, you can, you can redefine Christmas mm -hmm. for your future. You can. You could too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on this. Got to keep moving. Oh, uh, off, off the board. Uh, college football playoff ranking. I I'm so glad that it's changing only, only because I'm selfish, right? I want more games to watch that mean oh, something. Yes. So that's why I've always wanted eight teams, right? Yep. So yep. I hate that. I hate that this college football playoff <laughs> narrows it to just four teams, right? We'll have all these other stupid bowl games. I know we know this. We'll only have four teams that we get to watch. So selfishly, I hate it totally off the board on that. And I can't wait till it goes away next year. Yeah, I'm with you. That I, could, said, I could not agree more. That being said, it could be right this year. It could be dead right again. I was looking at the college football playoff ranks again this morning. Mm -hmm. Georgia, so long as they win, they're in it, right? I mean, they have to be in it. Michigan, so long as they beat Iowa, which they should, uh, they need to be in it. Washington, if they can beat Oregon again, they already beat them once, they can beat them again, yeah. they're in it. The only debate whatsoever is that fourth team right now is Florida State. Could Oregon yeah. sneak in there? Maybe. Could Texas sneak in there? Maybe. But you know what? As much as I hate it, as much as it's off the board because selfishly I want more games, I think they're going to be right unless we have a bunch of losses. If Alabama beats Georgia, it's all blown up. Oh, is there a way? Michigan? Yeah, well, if Oregon wins, if Oregon yeah, wins, but if, but, I mean, but if, if but, 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 hold on, but hold on, if Alabama beats Georgia, there's a possibility no SEC team in the Final Four. That would be insane. No, those that's people not, would that's not gonna those people would revolt, pitchforks to the streets. It would be it would be anarchy in the South. No. They that's would lose happen. their the minds. SEC, if there was... the SEC, the SEC is the number one ranked. Well, if Texas, if Texas wins, they beat Alabama. If Alabama beats Georgia, they figure they've got an argument. Now, I test or just George is one of the best four teams. It's not even close. Yeah. But that being said, they could still lose. Could you have a final? It'll make everyone SEC? mad, Bernie. What's what the, the the total reverse of what you just said could happen? Yeah. Alabama wins, and both George and Alabama are in. That would get in with one infuriate loss. everyone. Lose their minds because the SEC, the SEC is the top ranked conference. But now you got two SEC teams in there. I'm telling you. All right. Yeah. What, well, all right. So what if Louisville beats Florida State? Which could happen? Florida State's backup quarterback. The ACC is the worst. Not even close. Worst. Not even close. So they're out. Right. Right. So they're out. So Alabama wins. They get in. Texas wins. They beat Alabama, and they're sitting maybe, there going. Maybe Oregon there. sneaks in. Maybe, you know. But but I'm just saying. Like what? Like what, what would you say if you were Texas? Like wait a minute. Why are they in? Yeah. Well, or what? Oregon would have to beat Washington. I'm saying if Washington wins, all right, let's say okay, that stays yeah. the same, right? And they would be out of the way. Alabama would probably like, – who's there? Does Alabama jump Texas? I mean, Texas, like, hey, we played head-to-head. -head. We beat them mm -hmm. fairly, you know, and it wasn't all that close. I mean, they kind of handled – they kind of dominated that game. I mean, yeah. the score not necessarily, but they, you could tell they were always in charge. That would be – yeah, I would, I, I would love for that to blow up, and it would give us right into 12, game, 12 teams next season. I cannot wait. I cannot wait for our podcast next week because – who knows? All hell could break loose this weekend. We'll no, I'd, be, I'd love it. Right, we I'd got one it. minute left. In yeah, the hole, it, real quick. In the hole. Here we go. In the hole. Game of game of college football has passed all these old coaches by, except Nick Saban. But Nick Saban leans heavily on coordinators. It's time for the young people to move up. It just is. The game has passed a lot of these older coaches by. I would yeah, go more into it, but we don't have time. Term limits and government and college yeah, football. It, it's crazy. For, for it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, all right, my my in the hole, and I and I didn't get a chance to get to this last week. I'll do it quickly. We can expand on it next week. Uh, don't draw attention to yourself. I mean, I've always been a big fan of this. I always told the kids, "Hey, you want to stay up later when all the adults are getting together? Don't 
don't don't tell us about it. Just be quiet. Go upstairs, <laughs> read, just just have fun, play games. Just just yeah. don't draw attention to yourself and everything will be fine. Once you draw right. attention to yourself, you're going to bed. That's it, right? <laughs> yeah. James Madison, JMU football. Wow, draw, here we go. Them, yeah. Last last week, you know, going, going forward with lawsuits and what happens? They lose. And then yeah. the university shame, shamefully has to withdraw all the lawsuits. And they're like, yeah. okay, yeah, I guess we're not going to pursue this after all. Yeah. Don't attend, draw attention to yourself. I'd or, still like that coach, though. What you wish for. I still oh, I like too. that coach. I do, too. Love that guy. I do. We're way over. we got to go. <laughs> I knew we should have started earlier. I, I know, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, dude. Have a great week. I'll talk you to you too, later. Buddy. See you. Bye, everybody.